there, beloved Assisha Pioneers. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm taking a short break with my emails and everything, also with the videos until these uh, times of the full moon, <laughs> which is happening this weekend, a very powerful full moon. And I already mentioned this yesterday in my questions and answers videos that I'm going to be taking a short inner retreat to do some reading, you know, with this book that I still haven't gotten around to read because there were so many questions flooding my inbox and I just sometimes I just like I say I can't answer everyone <laughs> right away and I can do so many things because then I you know then I don't do my inner work but oftentimes when I work with people when I communicate I also do inner work because through communication and through communicating with others so many new things become revealed to me it's not just that you get these um, new guidances during your meditation time for me, it's often when I talk to people, you know, a very grounded way of getting guidance. Like when I write or when I communicate with people, it's just things come. And lately I've been receiving so many confirmations about these gifts that I have that are within me. And I would like to discuss this topic with all of you. And I think this is really important. So this is my last video <laughs> until the full moon. And then I'm going to go retreat like a beaver for a while. <laughs> and um, I really wanted to talk about this because these gifts are becoming so revealed to us right now. And these times when we are aligning with the new energies more and more, right? So what's happening to me is I keep noticing that everything that I say to people, everything that comes through when I speak is kind of like truth and it resonates and sometimes I because I don't have the uh, psychic abilities which of course is for me it's great because my ability is inner knowing you know which is like high above you know your seven chakra and beyond you know it's even with a lot of us who are connected to the highest guidance within the principles of one this has to do even with our stars star chakra this is the direct the direct connection uh to your portal of your being through your I am presence. So I'm really uh, also, I have to mention that I'm wearing this scarf that a beautiful sister of light has sent me from Canada. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for a beautiful birthday present for me. It's lovely. I love it. And it's pink color of divine love, of course. And I just was feeling that I need to come and speak to you in pink again. Of course, everything is about love. Like I say, and uh, these gifts that we have, the more, you know, we elevate in consciousness, the more these gifts come, not just from psychic ability, but from love. They come from the heart. They come from that center of pure God source. It's kind of like you don't always get confirmations that people who have psychic abilities, but you just know it in your heart and you, you're always guided to say the right words to their people. You're always guided to say things that people need to hear will have to hear. Sometimes maybe they don't like to hear, but you just know. So I would like to share some of the synchronicities about my confirmations, how I'm, you know, being guided more and more to work on these levels that are of the highest order of feeling and knowing things, of my inner knowingness. So you can better, you know, start relying on your own inner feelings because that's what I'm here for, talking to all of you, is hoping for you to go deeper within and start rediscovering your abilities tapping into your divine abilities because they're being you know it's like alarm clocks is uh, are ticking for all of us and it's a wake-up call and we get these information that you know keep coming and it comes in light packages like i always like to say and through the sound uh, when you see um when you hear ringing in your ears it's like these sound downloads it's like these cosmic waves that are coming and all you have to do is just receive but if you don't have an open heart that means you won't be able to use these higher knowings for the highest good. So your heart has to be open because sometimes you might receive certain things and you might know them, but you also, you know, your heart will be guiding you whether to say them or not, to utilize them or not. But the heart is the center for you to ground these abilities, always to connect it with the higher and the lower. You know, the middle path, always walking the middle path, always coming from your beautiful, beautiful soul, you know, merged together in your heart presence. So lately I've been having like these confirmations when I've been talking to people, you know, I need to see them face to face, either through Skype or in person. Because if I just do a reading and writing and I don't even see the person, it's kind of different. At least I need to see a photo or something, you know, and oh, I always had this feeling that just no for people. And sometimes this can feel like a burden also for all of you who have similar abilities. But when you know, sometimes, you know, 
Um, and not sometimes, always this comes as a great responsibility. If you've seen the movie Spider-Man, when the, his uncle says to him, says, you know, with great power comes great responsibility, which is true. The bigger the purpose, the bigger the responsibility. So the bigger your purpose, the bigger your being. And of course, <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a dualistic thing. Like I say, we're all one and we are all servants of the divine. But I just wanted to say that the grander you are in your awareness, the grander the responsibility will be. So it has to be very heart-centered. Your abilities, your inner knowingness, how you deal with people, the messages that you receive in order how you utilize them, how to give them to people. And um, sometimes we all need to build that self-esteem, that self-confidence first when we are dealing with this. So I'll give you a few of my confirmations. I'll give you an example of what happened yesterday. I had a um, half length, lengthy session with this uh, young female and um, we were talking and she sent me this question before about the gifts being blocked and her own feeling that there's something blocked. And we were talking and the moment I saw her and her beautiful eyes and her beautiful, you know, the whole structure of her beingness and her beauty, uh, the moment I thought, wow, you know, she looks like a high priestess from Avalon or something like that. And then later we talk about it and I say, do you know what's uh, Avalon? And she says, no. But she says, yeah, but this other woman, you know, like, I don't know, was it a psychic or something? Already told me that I was a priestess in times of England. And I say, yeah, that's Avalon, you know. I says, wow, it was a huge confirmation for me that I just, when I looked at her and I felt something, you know, it's not like I get a vision like psychics do, but psychic energy, like I tell most of you, has to do with your third eye. And a lot of the times this is... Uh, connecting with the astral planes some some psychics will connect to the lower astral planes it's not good <laughs> not all information there is mostly not pure higher astral planes um, a lot of psychics who are pure are tuning into that who have abilities on the psychic level but some of us we just have that higher knowingness which comes from not the astral level um we are tuning into that spirit you know just the pure energies and there's nothing in, that is tainted there you just know things and you have to be like i say have to be a pure channel and your being has to reside on that level so it has to be on a soul level these gifts that we have they're always on a soul level so whatever is a rite of passage in the soul will be utilizing this life even when there's blockages our soul creates them for a reason like i've been telling that person which i was working with yesterday i said even when we block when we see it from a higher perspective, we see that the block was there for a reason. It needed to be expressed because the soul always know what it will choose on a soul level. The personality might not always understand it and when it might perceive it as something bad. For instance, when you say block, a lot of people, when they hear the word blockage, they go in fear. Oh my God, I'm blocked. You know, when we think about that, they get even more blocked because the mind will perceive something and will be so powerful, especially in the third dimensional consciousness. The mind is a very powerful tool. The more you get into the fifth dimensional awareness, the less the mind has that ability. You know, people like to say the mind creates, the mind creates. But in the fifth dimension, the mind is more moving into the heart space. So the heart creates, the feeling creates, the love, the pure love that Jesus and so many other masters were talking about. And they're st still working with us from higher planes, teaching us about that, working with each and every individual now that is activating their own Christ seed. But to get back to that story from yesterday, you know, I got a huge confirmation from that person that, wow, I am sensing things the right way. Uh, and there was something else. And she said, she's not really from England, but she said right now she's in UK. And I was like, yeah, that's why you're there. You're there to reconnect back with those energies. And just at the moment that she feels that she's ready to like unblock something. And we did a beautiful light activation and she felt really good, very warm after it. And I um, helped her to go to the level of the soul and intent with the soul to breathe in all the gifts and abilities of the soul and that it is safe. A lot of the people might still have that ancient memory, you know, that it's not safe. Um, dealing with uh, the connection to past lives and many other things like that. But my subject today is about tapping into those gifts and abilities and knowing that it's safe for us to utilize them. But the safest way is always through the gateway of love. That's why I'm wearing this beautiful scarf today. To really, rem to really remind you that everything we are is love. And the highest gifts that we could possibly have on a soul level, they, they're dealing with love. I remember myself, I used to ask myself, but I don't have any gifts. You know, when I started my awakening, everybody was able to see something or hear something. And still, sometimes I say, I don't have these gifts. But then it's like, 
someone told me, I don't remember when that was, but it was like, you don't need it. Because you have pure, your pure love. You don't, you don't need it. You just show up and you're love. You radiate it all over. And um, that was it. And I said, that's right. And all the masters have been teaching the same. It's all about love. And today, I was guided to see this text on Facebook shared by a beautiful sister of light. It was about a prayer. And the prayer to the divine that, you know, the prayer went something like, I used to want riches and my life to unfold a certain way. But now all I want is love, love for everything. Love already resolves everything. And I'm thinking the biggest gift that you can have is that beautiful space of unconditional, radiant love that is the gateway to divine love that we all are. So when we, when you are that love, when you can be in that perfect, beautiful space of your wholeness, you can work magic just by showing up somewhere or just by, you know, being there. If people feeling your energy, you know, serving as an anchor point, as a transmitter of light. Also, of course, we have other gifts. Like I said, I didn't really know that I have these things. Sometimes I was saying, I don't know how to do readings because everybody who was doing readings through Oracle cards or something else was doing them in a way to kind of direct the future outcomes, the possibilities, you know, this might happen or that might happen or they see certain timelines or events, which of course a lot of the psychics say that uh, after 2012, they can see it as much because the answer that I got through my automatic writing is... Um, this is a space that is going to change. It's no more uh, linear timelines. No timelines are going to be, you're going to be deciding, you're going to become co-creators. And there's no more such things as um, these decisions that are linear. So that many psychics can now see, they won't be like that anymore. So the thing is, I was wondering, you know, why I can do this. But the, the things that I say to people and the things that I get out in my readings are always of the highest guidance. And the highest guidance within the principle of oneness uh, within the realms of illuminated truth, uh, which I'm connected to, is um, always coming in the space of now. And I'll tell you something about this. Yesterday I was speaking about this to my mom, and I told her. I said, look, people a lot of times they talk about past lives, and they, they go back, but they become entangled. They say, I had this issue in a past life, and they keep going back and keep going back, and they don't move forward because the only progress... The only real holding that can be done is the one right here and now. And when you remember that you are a multidimensional being and you can imagine this now moment at this uh, like this vortex point and the all the timelines extending out from it, you know, like these waves, like rays of energy. And when you think of it in that now moment where you always are, all you have to do is change, is shift the vibration, is shift, do the inner holding here. And once you do it here, because time is not linear, you also change all the other realities, all the other possibilities, all the other realms, even the past. Because the past is not something that is unchangeable. It's not something that is not being able to work at. Because a lot of the people who still don't come from their highest awareness think of these things as linear. And have a feeling because this happened, I have to, I have to keep going back and resolve things from the past in order to be healed here, which is the... The perceptive, the perspective of this is really mm, not kind of misunderstood. It means it's not expanded enough to the degree that aligns with the highest truth of our oneness. Where I'm always coming from is a space of oneness. That's why I'm speaking these truths in the, from the space of oneness, from the awareness of the one, principles of one and principles of creation. Because a lot of the people give guidance on another level, which is good. It's all good. On every level, the truth will be different. It will modify itself. But from that perspective of oneness, of the zero point, when you change, when you hold right here and now, you change all the other outcomes. So basically, you see, that is so simple to understand. So like I say, we have many gifts and abilities, and it will be up to us what timeline we wish to associate with, what we wish to connect to. For instance, when a certain psychic will say to you, uh, you have the ability to do this or that. I remember talking two years ago when I was still not that aware of who I truly am. I just started waking up. I was talking to the psychic who told me that I was high priest in Atlantis. And I think I mentioned this quite a few times in my video. Whoa, something fell up outside someone. Anyway, I'm sorry. I got kind of scared. Um, she told me, and I really didn't want to associate with that because I had a feeling I'm not this high priest. I'm here and now. You know, I had a higher awareness than she did back then. And she was speaking in some things in the terms of the linear space, linear time and space, which I really didn't re resonate, even though I wasn't that awake 
yet to who I am, I had these concepts that were on a soul level, belonging as a rite of passage to me on a soul level for me to understand them, to be able to understand them. So I didn't resonate with half of the things that she was saying. But there were some things that really were interesting to me and I needed to hear them at that time. And I remember when she was saying, you have all the knowledge, all the wisdom, you will only have to bring it forth in this life. And like, like do the exam, you know, finalize the exam and say, you know, this is mine, you know, I claim it. But I don't see it as such, you know, I don't see anything as being as mine, you know, even the principles of one, all these principles of creation, they're not mine. I can tune into them if I am developed as a being on that level, but they're not mine. I don't possess any knowledge, any wisdom, it's not mine. It only runs through me, okay? I know this subject kind of went astray, but I guess I guess the divine guidance wants to speak this through me right now, and I never know when I'm gonna record in my videos anyway. So uh, one, one of the things she said back then was, you will also, you know, uh, be able to have workshops and seminars, and you'll be able to see people and tell them exactly where they were, uh, who they were, what they were, and I'm thinking, wow, it's interesting. But I kind of forgot it. And yesterday when I'm speaking to that woman via Skype, I'm thinking, yeah, I do have that. But not in a sense that she was trying to tell me. Because it's not important for me to focus upon, I don't see it as you were this and that in that time period or exactly. I don't, I'm not a, you know, like I said, I'm not a psychic or clairvoyant. But I read, it's kind of, kind of like reading the energy of people. And mostly what I see, I see, I see from the level that is higher, um, I see the perspective that is, the plans that they have made on a soul level, you see their, you kind of read their, um, their, their lesson, their major experience that they want to experience and what they need to uh, do in order to be fully aligned with their soul. This is the level that I see at. I don't see on a psychic level such as you were this and that, because if you just find out about that, then what good does it do you? You have to really become aware of who you are now. Why all the decisions you have made until now in this moment have brought you here? Why you have made them? To brought you here and why you're here and that is why i think my purpose as an ascension pioneer is to help people guide about into understanding who they are now and why they're here from all the multiple realities that coexist why they're living this reality why they have made the decisions that they're here and to have that higher understanding about the universal principles and the principles of structures of creation so they can better understand how everything works, so they can attune to that universal <laughs> enfoldment of everything and these principles, because when we're aligned with these principles, we can have all the gifts and abilities that we desire. So yesterday, you know, when I was able to feel those things and get a confirmation about them, I was instantly reminded about what that woman said to me. And then I remembered I had also, like a year ago, a reading, a star reading, a short one from Lavender, the galactic shaman, and she sent me the, the MP3. And in that, she was saying, again, the same thing, like, <laughs> that I see through people, that I have all the knowledge, and that basically I can tap into people's records, and that I will be able to go into records and read them, that this is in my rite of passage. But I'm thinking, you know, even when some people say some things about you, when they're on a certain level of understanding things, if you, if your awareness will rise even higher above that, it's not higher, sorry guys, more expanded, like you see it even from a more grand point of view, you will see that it's really not about reading into other people's records or, you know, telling them things about them from the past, but just seeing from a point of oneness, their soul and their uniqueness and what they're here for and to help give them guidance right here in the now moment, because that is all that matters. Is it really beneficial for you what will happen to you in the future if you live here only in the now and you're already co-creating your future? So I think all of us need to kind of tune into the abilities that we have on our own level of understanding and move further and move into a more expanded way of, um, of connecting to these abilities, not just like because I think everyone eventually was seeing a psychic or a clairvoyant or intuitive. But to shift to a level that we will be fully self-aware and fully confident in our gifts and abilities. And um, for me, that is saying to people exactly what they need to hear. Because most of the times when I was posting things on Facebook, people were saying, oh my God, exactly what I needed to hear. And that's it. That is the guidance that comes from the highest oneness state right here right now what is for your highest good 
And that is what I wanted to talk about. So for me, a lot of the synchronicity and confirmation is coming from, I just kind of read things and I know about things. And uh, lately from my challenging experiences that I went through, I kind of stopped connecting to that side of me and now I reconnected back. And I'm so happy because this is a, this is a part of me that, you know, it just determines who I am. I mean, not that it determines it, but it, it's who I am. And it's kind of hard to live away from it and to deny the gifts that lie within my soul. And I think for all of you, it, it's just the same. So embrace your soul. Embrace the wonderful abilities and gifts that you have. And remember, they, when they're coming from the highest place, they will come from your heart. And... Uh, Live with them through the heart. That's what it matters the most. And when it's this way, you're always focused on service. That's all that matters anyway. Okay, this is what I wanted to talk about today. And like I said, there will be no more videos for a while now. But I'll talk to you soon. I promise. Anyway, take care. Love you lots. Bye.